All right, I'm here in Ottawa. My name is Haku Ming, King Tonga, King Haku, whatever you call me. Just make sure you watch this, the Hannibal TV, that I'm proud of and be part of it to be here and talk to you all. Come on down and let's see it or help out by coming and watch this Hannibal TV. I better watch it. I may be talking nice to you, but again, come right into your living room and pull you out. Hear me? That's right. You better be shaky. Hi, Aku. Hi. How are you? Good, good. Good. Yeah. This is Laura for d -Anibal TV, and I'm here today with someone very special, Aku. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have a good flight? Oh, well, it was good. It was good? Yeah. Good. Yeah, it was very good. Do you find it too cold? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> it's been a while, but I don't know what's going on with the world. You know, it's... You know, I, I'm from Florida, yeah. and it's cold in Florida too. When it goes down to 55 or 40s, that's too cold for us in Florida. I've seen uh, people with winter jacket in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. You want to go through the questions? So we're going to get started. Mm -hmm. You were WWE Tag Team Champion with Andre the, G the Giant. Right. How was that, being a, t a tag team partner with such a legend? It was an honor, you know, for me to to be his partner, you know, and Andre, as you all know, just like he said, you know, was a legend and still is today with his name all over the world, you know, everybody knows, especially in wrestling, uh, or with the movies and stuff like that. Yeah, it was great, you know, and uh, it was a good, uh, great experience. Did you travel with him? Yes. Was it tight in the car? <laughs> <laughs> no, because, you know, the WWF then, you know, always provide, you know, a big van for him or, you know, so. But in the uh, airplane, yes, it was tight in the airplane, you know, of course, with the first class. But still, he's a big man, you know, to, it's comfort there. Or, you know, some of the, um, airline don't have first class so they have to have the whole um a, a row, seat, so a like row, the whole yeah, row the whole <laughs> row for him you know three you know so you know with me i'm just sitting right beside him or, or sit behind him or yeah uh what was his appetite like was he seriously a big eater or <laughs> Have you noticed anything, any stories uh, of a big meal that was like extremely impressive? Well, um, you know, with him, he likes, at the time we were tagging up, he likes to eat and he likes to drink, you know. So, you know, I don't know if I should say it was uh, European style anyway. Yeah. You know, like your wine, you know, like your, and of course, after the meal, you know, he always said, you know, Tonga, we had to have the fr French connection, <laughs> the French connection. You know, he had that two liquor that, you know, mixed together and we had, uh, drank that after meal. But yes, uh, not that, you know, like everybody see how much he drink or eat, you know, but he was eating every day and, you know, of course, uh, he eats. He eats yeah, a lot. Yeah. <laughs> and drink a lot. And drink a lot. <laughs> you were very popular in the Montreal Wrestling Territories mm. in your younger days and held the Canadian Championship. Yes. Could you share some of your favorite memories of working in this area? You know, experience. And I, I thank you for asking that question. Because in this business, somebody like me, and I know there are a few, that we came from different countries. And, of course, with the languages, mm -hmm. English, of course, French, you know, whatever it is maybe, I remember coming in here from uh, Puerto Rico. We had two or three guys over in, in uh, French Martin and... Uh, I met French Martin. Lafayette. You know, that he passed also. Yes. Yeah. And then 
There was a tech team. Rougeau? The, no, no, the Rougeaus. Uh, one from Puerto Rico and one from uh, Quebec. Uh, I can't bring the name, but you know, they were there at the time that I was. So when they left uh, Puerto Rico, and I guess I made a good expre expression in them, they called back that they were looking for a heel. Yeah, so, okay, you know. But it was the time right there, so uh, they brought me in to go back. And that's, but before I left, everybody's talking about the language. Oh, you won't like it there because, you know, they speak French, you know, they'll snub you because they don't like the, uh, you know, uh, ugly Americans and all that stuff, you know, all this story like that, you know, uh, you know, here I am, I'm trying to learn how to speak English and I'm in a, a Hispanic uh, country, I'm trying to learn at least a little Spanish, right? And I'm coming over, so I said to myself, well, must be somebody speak, you know, English there, I'm sure, but in the same time, you know, hey, I can always learn how to speak, uh, um, uh, French, that my favorite is that, you know, Wat een chier tabernak. Wat een chier tabernak. Ja, daar is een Tyler. I said, een dozen. What am I going to say, you know, that, that tell the fans is a bad guy, you know, he said, Wat een chier tabernak, how cool, or talk or whatever at the time, you know. But, yeah, and that was something, you know, anybody shouldn't be afraid because of the language, because of that's a lovely thing to learn, the cultures, of course, you know, they're doing. I love it there. Good. Yeah, I love it there. You feuded with Dino Bravo during, yeah. this, uh, during that same time. Any thoughts on, the, on his murder and how it was allegedly uh, committed by a mob hit? I have no idea. Uh, Darujo told me later on. But the time I was there with him, you know, you hear all kind of stories about his uncle was, you know, with the um, uh, mob and all this stuff, you know, and, you know, we didn't know anything, never meet anybody, you know, that's like that. But, you know, of course, you, you're working with a bunch of, uh, um, uh, uh, what you call, um, Italian, Canadian, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, we had a great time. They were always good to us, especially me with my stupid things, of, you know, fighting in the bars. Or, now I know, one, I, you know, that's why they didn't throw me in jail, right? <laughs> but yeah, but you know, I had a great time. And like I said earlier, you know, with all this negative about coming to Montreal, you know, even in those days, I told my wife, you know, let's live here. I like it. You then. liked it? Yeah. But she said, no, we had to move back. At the time they have all those uh, airplanes that they were, you know, kidnaps and all that stuff, you know. So, you know, she was kind of afraid that, you know. So, you know, we moved back. And of course, WWF perfectly come in and took off. So we moved back to the States after that. Do you have any memories of wrestling uh, Bruiser Bro uh, Brody in Japan? Yeah. How was that? Bruiser Brody is one of the top heels respect by the uh, Japanese. And you're talking about, you know, with um, Stan Hansen, uh, you're talking about uh, Taiga Jit Singh, you know, Excuse me, all those foreigners that went in there, you know, with um, Giant Baba and Inoki, of course, both sides there, and you know, Abdullah the Butcher, mm -hmm. you know, these guys there, um, the original uh, Sheik, mm -hmm. you know, so th these guys were unbelievable. I was just coming in when these guys were there, and I saw the matches and stuff like that. But Bruiser Brody, it was, I didn't know them from America. I was still young then, and I saw what they were doing and everything. Wow, you know, to me, they were, but in the same time, 
you know, how they run over the fans and everything, Japanese. Or culture. It was an honor for them to run over <laughs> these guys and to kick the chair, eat you and everything. You know what I'm saying? And that's the different cultures in the world. Japanese are ownerly people, so if they hit you and you take a bump and say, oh, did you see that? He hit me, you know. Bruce Brody hit me. But uh, yes, Bruce Brody was, you know, one of those guys there that draw, you know, like all these guys that I named them. You know, it was unbelievable. Any thought on his uh, passing away? Of course. I'm sure we all hear the same thing, you know, that he was passed from, you know, um, got killed mm -hmm. in Puerto Rico and all that stuff like that. And, you know, we will never know the real story of it. You know, you hear a story and I don't want, I'm one of those guys that I don't want to tell a story that I wasn't there. But this is what I hear, you know, that he was a, you know, and. Um, he was proud to tell me mm -hmm. that his wife from New Zealand, mm -hmm. because you know I'm from that side of the uh, of the world, uh, you know. And I'm, whew, my goodness, after he died, it was like 15 years later, or maybe more, that I'm finally met the wife over at CAC, you know, Cauliflower Alley uh, Club there in Las Vegas. Was she looking to get um, some kind of, not a revenge, but some kind of justice? Or she was in peace with the way uh, things happened? Well, the wife? When, when you met her? When I met her, yeah. yeah. Um, no, she was, all I did the first time I met her and said, look, uh, my name is Tonga and finally got to meet you. I'm not trying to take away from everybody here, but I wanted to let you know that your husband was so proud to tell me that you're from, you know, uh, New Zealand, just because I'm from that, you know, New Zealand and South Pacific. And he, she was um, nice to meet you. And that was it. That was it. Yeah. You wrestle in Puerto Rico during these years, like in the 80s. How was that for you? Did you enjoy it? Yes. Good um, crowds? Yes, <laughs> <laughs> and probably you here now, again, that we talk about cultures, mm -hmm. you know, and also the people, uh, the um, craziness of the hot sun, you know, it's just like you all here, you know, you're a little different because the, I guess the snow is too cold for you guys here. The way your culture here is different from the hot weather there, you know. They're a little crazier in that way, you know. Yeah, it was, uh, Puerto Rico was, you know, they believe, you know, they uh, support their, their wrestlers from the island, uh, uh, yeah. And, you know, me, just happened that I was, looked like them, but I didn't speak the language, you know, with the Afro and, you know, the way I was looking and everything, you know. But, and they hate me, but in the same time, either love me or respect me. I think they respect me. They love to hate you. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. They love to hate me. That's what, and that was the, the thing with Puerto Rico. And that was my first break also to work on top, you know, uh, again, they were looking for a hill. Dusty Rhodes was the one who sent me over there with Carlos Colon and, you know, and I guess, okay, let's push him and see <laughs> what can we, do, you know. But, you know, of course, again, I keep coming to what your first question because it's very important to me, mm -hmm. you know, about the language. You know, they didn't want to turn me to be a, a good guy because I can't speak Spanish. Yeah. But they don't realize, you know, hey, if they love you, if they respect you, this guy is gonna get over, no matter where he's from. Mm -hmm. If he works hard, you know, that they like the way I work and my style, they'll love me. And that's what happened, you know, once they turned me from bad guy to good, good guy, it was unbelievable.
Very yeah. nice. Arlie Ray speak very highly of you in his book. Yes. Um, he unfortunately passed away last year. Could you share any memory with us about uh, Arlie? Yeah. Maybe one or two? Arlie. Arlie Ray is very respected. Again, with Japan, the first time I met him, he was the Fungs, mm -hmm. those uh, champions, you know, him at the time. When he came in, you know, as young boys, I was one of the young boys then, you know, I had to, they, I found out later that Baba put me with him to go and pick up his bags, make sure that he's on time to the bus, what he wants and everything, you know. Because he wasn't good with schedule? No, no, that's the respect. Ah, sorry. Yeah, for the champion, I was there. But the rest of them, they have the guys, the other wrestlers, the young ones, to call them. And you know, let them know you know we're living. That's the the routine they have there. They had there. We're living at four o'clock, and you know it's about twenty minutes before four. You know, uh, if you don't mind, start coming down. So you know, and a lot of them been there so many times, so they know. But Holly Ray's Baba wants me to start learn how to speak English, and he put me with Holly Ray's. The little that he knows, Harley Ray smokes a lot and he doesn't speak much. So, for example, Harley, you ready? And, you know, he's already down, you know, at the lobby because he's smoking. Okay, sir, you know. We're going. Come, come, please. You know, at the time, with my little English, you know, he was just smiling. And, and then later on, you know, because of that, I guess he, you know, likes me and everything. All of a sudden, I pop up here in America, but they know also that's where they send us and get us prepared for the future, and then they send back us, send back to Japan, and you know, they do all everything, you know, like we at the time uh, they send a magazine, a person or a newspaper, you know, person for a month and write about us and send to Japan. That's how they build us in those days. And uh, yes, you know, I have so much respect for him. And the other one is when WWF gave me the, uh, <clears throat> the king, it was from him. Oh, so that was true. Yes. He gave you his blessing to take yeah, over that gimmick. to take over the gimmick. Must have felt yeah. very good. Oh yeah, uh, I was grateful. Like I said, you know, so many things that, you know, I was blessed with. And I thank God every day for that. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> you wrestle Hulk Hogan on an episode of Saturday Night's yeah. main event where you were King Haku. Mm. What was your memory of that match? And how was your relationship with Hogan over the years? Hogan is a Floridian. And let me tell you, with WWF at the time, great champion, great person, Hogan. Because in this way, uh, we had a meeting that uh, McMahon then said, look, wherever you want to live, we'll fly you out. Just like that. And then, you know, everybody was there for this big meeting. It was the first time, I believe. And so Hogan got up, never forget that. And he looked, guys, just wanted to let you know. And he was right at the time, you know. Florida is a beautiful place. I was born there, I was raised there. Right now, the economy is good, it's time, you know, for you guys to buy a home there is cheap and is, you know, that you'll be able to. You know, you guys, up to you, whatever you want to do, but that, you know, I never forget that, you know. Did and, you follow his lead? Did you buy a yeah. home? Yeah, you did, okay. <laughs> yeah, I still live in that house, <laughs> you know. Yeah, and he was, you know, and that was the thing. The match, of course, you had to wrestle at the time with Hogan. 
he's the champion. Mm -hmm. That's the only one, that's the only time you're gonna make some money, <laughs> you know, wrestling the champion. Otherwise, <laughs> no. <laughs> was it one of your best payday? Yes, of it course. Was? Oh yeah. yeah, every time you wrestle him, it's one of the, you know, beside, you know, being with the, you know, with the giant and, you know, you wrestle with, with him, you know, you con you know, continuously on TV. You know, those days where you, you're not on TV, you don't pay as much as everybody else, you know. But, you know, it, it was great, you know. Hogan nice. is one of, yeah. And he loves his people from Florida. You know, Christmas party, you know. Invite, Were you invited? Invite of all of us, two or three Christmas in a row. Still you to know. this day or back no, then? No, back, back then, then. Okay. back then, yeah. Do you have a relationship with him today? That's one thing about the wrestlers. You don't call them, but you know, when, once you see each other, it was just like yesterday. Then you just came, you know, a little bit older, but, <laughs> but you know, we all love each other. There's something about the wrestlers. You know, we maybe fight with each other, but once we see each other, you know, uh, at least that's me. That's you, probably. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Arn Anderson has said you used to travel with him, and you were uh, you are one of his favorite people in the wrestling business. Do you have any memories you could share with us about Arn? Does that Arn Anderson? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, Arn is. Great worker, okay. great mind for the business, you know, uh, four horsemen, you know, those, those are the things, you know, you have the list to go on and on, you know, with, with Arn. And uh, yeah, we used to travel together on the road and everything. And uh, I heard, just heard that he's one of the agent for AEW, or, mm -hmm. so yeah. Did well. The Barbarian has said on record, you are one of his far tougher than him. You are far tougher than him. Do you think it's true or he's just being mo modest? Yeah, he's just being modest, yeah. You know, there are people, as we all know, the quiet people is the one we have to watch. Mm -hmm. We never know, you know what I'm saying? Because my father was like that. You know, he reminds me of my father. He's quiet until, you know, he's getting mad and then, you know, <laughs> see you. <laughs> uh, um, do you have any of his uh, story of the barbarian being tough, like uh, acting off as a really tough, the well, toughest? Barbarian uh, and I grew up in Tonga. Did you knew each other back then? Yeah. Oh, you did? Yeah. Uh, and then we went to the same high school. Yeah, I don't want to tell this. He's a little bit older than me, but he was said, he, but he's look younger than me, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, yes, and we went to sumo rivers in our country. Like the wrestling sumo, you yeah. practice doing that? Yeah, that's how we left the island. That's why we're here, sitting in front of you, Lord, <laughs> you know, because of sumo. He was very, very strong. You know, Barbarian was very, the balance in him was unbelievable. You know, we were six of us, and of course the rest of the Japanese. You know, I was pretty good, you know, the youngest, but I was good in that way with the techniques and stuff like that. But when it's come, you know, time to, even with the techniques, you, you know, I have to, you know, move him around because he got that balance, you know, he will, you know, very, very strong. You are technically part of the New Japan uh, Wrestling Bullet Club. Mm. Faction that your son Tamatonga has uh, been very successful him, uh, with. You must be very proud. Yes. Yes. New Japan is now doing events in the United States more regularly. Is there any chance that you might be competing with them? <laughs> uh, well, I did twice already. Okay. You know, with uh, that, I was grateful for the ideas and stuff like that. You know, San Francisco and, and now, of course, here. Uh, in the Madison Square Garden. With the Madison Square Garden one, I was very surprised. Because in my mind, and from, now, from then, I can never say never. It's like that movie, you know, with Sean Connery and the thing. Never say never. Because I didn't know in million years, I didn't even think that, you know, we are going to be end up 
at the uh, Madison Square Garden together because they have their rules, they have their way, you know, and then of course with McMahon, you know, the way he runs things, he always, you know, stop everybody using what he's using, you know, the arenas that the old days. <laughs> but um, uh, yes, very proud of Tamatonga and Tamaroa and the uh, upcoming, you know, we have the youngest boy also, Higureo, is in England, you know, working his way up, you know, so. Um, yes, and also, you know, he's starting this thing out of that, you know, in mind that they were uh, thinking about is called the uh, the party after, Bullet Club party after uh, WrestleMania. And, you know, uh, so far so good, you know. I love the, you know, to see that, the creative of things. And, you know, you go back, as you see, all these guys, Dwayne, it's not just wrestling movies and all that stuff, you know, he's going into YouTube, all that stuff is unbelievable. And, you know, that's all I ask for you, for them to, you know, to be better than I do. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You Are know. all your kids in wrestling? No. Yes, except my, my daughter, the she oldest. You didn't want to do anything with that? <laughs> well, well, you know, but our grandson, Oh, is, is his father is George Murdo, you know, so yeah, that's uh, the part of her in wrestling, you know, is the, the son, you know, the one of, uh, of the wrestlers there. For, you're very happy of the New Japan US extension then, expansion, sorry, extension. You uh, think it's a good thing? It's a great thing. It's a great thing. Because, like you guys here, for example, you know, imagine if you get big, that big, that you, you know what I'm saying? You're big now here, and, but you need to go out, for example. You yeah. know what I'm saying? No, it's true. Because this is what it is. I don't think about myself, just about myself and my family, that I thank God every day, you know, with the Samoan dynasty and all of us there. We, appreciate these companies are popping up, AEW, you know, all this, because it gives jobs, works for all these guys calling themselves wrestlers. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So that's my point is, it's good for all these people to be able to get a job, to go to work, you know, to get their dream come mm -hmm. tr true. It's true. I Right? More opportunities. More opportunities. Kevin Sullivan has been one of your biggest supporters over the years and managed you in the Dungeon of Doom when you were in WCW. Any memories of working with Sullivan? Our fans love him. He's a big part of the Animal TV. You know, uh, the, the devil that we call <laughs> because he has ideas and you know, with him at WCW being the booker and all that stuff. People, uh, companies that still use him today with his way of visualizing thing for now and the future. So yeah, I, you know, again, as being part of me that I have the Japanese, you know, I always respect these people, you know, kind of, all right, just tell me, what I have to do and I'll do it the best I can. So, you know, yeah, we talk and all this stuff, we have a meal and everything, but I never talk to him about the business. Okay. But I watch him and learn from what he's doing and, you know, even today he still call me up and, you know, see what's going on and, you know, uh, if I want to go somewhere, you know, uh, he's booking, uh, there's uh, opportunity somewhere. For he's booking for New England, isn't he? Or is he doing something for England? No? Yeah. Yeah, he is. Yeah. And he's involved. Yeah. He's involved. Yeah. But that's, that's him. You know, you never know where he's going to pop out there. <laughs> yeah. You're very close with Dwayne The Rock Johnson, you were, and bought you a truck several years ago as a gift. Could you tell us this story? Yeah. Uh, every year I go up there to ask for autograph from what I do now, I'm working for these 
gentleman, David Mars, since I left WWF, and he have a foundation. So every time you know, I go up there, just asking his mother to get me the, and you know, I'll go up and pick up the, uh, uh, um, the autograph mm -hmm. signing, you know. So one time, that year, I went up to pick it up, you know, and she said, well, Dwayne wants to see you, you know, since you're coming in, you know, uh, and he's in town. So I said, okay. We waited there, and then, you know, suddenly he show up, and just three of us, you know. And then, you know, he told me, you know, you work in a dealership, Tonga? I said, yeah. You know, Come on, take a look at this. We went out, there's the truck. He opened up and I, yeah, he said, what do you think? I said, the best thing for now, you know, all this truck is good, that it's big at the back also, that it's comf comfortable, you know. <clears throat> and, you know, he walked around, you know, and turned around and he said, well, it's yours. You know, me and his mother, we both stood there and like, what? Did we hit this right? <laughs> <laughs> Drive quick. <laughs> yeah. That's a very nice gift. Yes. Dwayne's father, Rocky, passed away last, uh, last month. Yeah. I understand you were also very close with him. Do you have any memories to share with us about Rocky? Yes. Rocky was the one who reached out from the other side of the, uh, in the dressing room. First time I met him, you know, of course he already married Duata and they had Dwayne already. But that was the first time, me coming from Japan and, you know, he just stand up and he say, Chief, <clears throat> that he call. And I look around, you know, and he walked towards me. And, you know, of course he got up, he said, Rocky Johnson, soul man, Rocky Johnson. Introduced myself, he said, yeah, I married, the, you know, Atta, the Chief Peter Maivia's daughter. That was it. You know, they took me in, and I really, really appreciate that because I was just a wild man, wild kid, really, at the time, 17, I think, or 18. You know, didn't know much about America and trying to make a living in the same time, you know. And they took me in, you know, like a little brother for both of them, you know. And Ada, of course, didn't have a brother, so, you know, I was the little one. <laughs> and, uh, and that was the the whole thing there, we become family, and since then, you know, and we're always, yeah. That's good. Finally, you were honored at last year's Cauliflower Alley Club Award ceremony mm -hmm. with the Tag Team Award with the Faces of Fear. Mm -hmm. Do you have any favorite matches from that tag team? The Faces of Fear? Um, So many matches. Now, <laughs> good question, but you know, it's just. Let me say this: all the matches were good, as I always say that, because we're going to work, and also whatever we can do, we have to do it. You know, sometimes you don't feel like it, but you know it's your job, and you have to do it uh, in that way. Um, Barbarian, it was always, I am grateful that even today that we're here together as we are growing old, and, and I mean it from my heart, you know, after all these years that we still work together. But uh, yeah, with all the, you know, tag team, the demolitions and, you know, the heat and all of them, you know, we were grateful to work with them and, you know, um, and still is that we're still the faces of fear. And, you know, of course, last year we were honored, you know. Um, I look at it, this, you know, uh, I thank you, but, you know, I appreciate the recognition, yeah. Mm. Will you be at uh, this year's Cauliflower Alley convention? Yes. You will? Yes, okay. I will. 
Very good. Uh, last one. Do you have any closing remark for our great North Wrestling fans or for the Animal TV fan on YouTube that will be watching this interview? Well, I just like to say thank you to the fans and please don't stop supporting because we need you. Mm -hmm. You know, to support the Hannibal uh, production and, you know, the nor great North, the great North, because, you know, uh, in order for these sports to keep going is up to the fans. And, you know, I can see that he's trying to bring all the different, you know, uh, wrestlers, uh, great wrestlers and, you know, great talkers and mm -hmm. everybody. But uh, yes, we need to support the fans out there, not just with the camera, not just you know Facebook and all this stuff. Whatever it needs to be helped, you know, he needs you guys to support him, and uh, we also thankful and appreciate. Mm -hmm. You know, we also uh, part of it that you know we still come in and sign autographs and wrestle because of the fans out there. And You're also going to be at the WrestleCon, aren't you? At the Tampa WrestleCon? For WrestleMania? For WrestleMania. Barbarian is. Oh, I yeah. thought it was you. I misunderstood. Yeah, sorry. I believe it's a Barbarian. I haven't heard anything. Okay. But in the same time, uh, I will be with the uh, Bullet Club. Ah, that's where you're going. Uh, yeah. So that's your jacket, the Bullet Club. Yes, yes. Yeah, ah, as, part, as part of the Bullet Club and being proud with my children, you know, with the, you know, and the company that I work for, you know, <laughs> New Japan Pro Wrestling, you know, yeah, but we were at the, the party with the Bullet Club. Great North Wrestling Apocalypse, we got El Casador de Sangre versus Haku here in Rockland. Haku unleashing some violence and there's some lefts and rights as El Casador Sangre delivers his own violence here. Big chop! Oh! By Haku! Oh! El Casador de Sangre! Chopping the giant down! Haku getting fired up here! Thrown into the rose line! Oh, there he up he goes! Sending El Casador de Sangre outside of the ring! Haku is known as one of the toughest men in the world. The toughest of all time! Reputed by everyone, the likes of everyone who's ever covered Professor Wrestling, seen Professor Wrestling, they know he's the most violent. But tonight he's facing Puerto Rico's biggest export of violence, and that El Casador de Sangre, who's just beating this man down. Oh, we've seen the reign of violence he's unleashed over the last couple of months here. El Casador de Sangre has got a freaking chair. Absolutely no effect, and he just slapped El Casador de Sangre back to Puerto Rico. Oh, Haku is one bad mofo. You see oh, the chair shot. You should see the fans out here. They're all standing in awe. They're yeah. seeing Haku just demolish El Casador de Sangre. There are rumors of Haku beating up 12 cops. Some more violence. Oh. Big chair shot right on the back of El Casador de Sangre. We've never witnessed El Casador de Sangre take so much abuse. If you were expecting anything else from this guy, you don't know him. He's a monster. He's an absolute legend worldwide. Oh my goodness! Haku gets thrown into the fans. Casador de Sangre is on top of him. Potentially choking the life right out of the Tongan giant. We've seen what sort of violence El Casador de Sangre has brought to GMW. But we've never seen him face off against his... The, this has got to be his toughest opponent ever. They kick to the stomach. Is he going to give him the power?
Sunday to finish off Haku here at Apocalypse. The fans are cheering for Haku as the legend makes it up to his feet. Double axe handle by the Puerto Rican murderer El Cazador de Sangre. Tonga. They hear it in Puerto Rico, they hear it in Japan. We've got fans tuning in from all over the world to watch this oh. match here. My God, what a lariat by El Casador de Sangre. The ring just shifted. Everyone in Tonga is crying right now as the Haku's getting murdered here by El Casador de Sangre. Wait oh. a minute. Trump oh. is down. Tremendous power by Haku. He just picked up a 270 pound man and just like dropped nothing. him like a sack of mierda. Cheer. for a cheer for Haku, the king of professional wrestling. We've got friends from all over Canada, from the U.S. who've come down to see the legend here. They want to see the legend finish. They want to see him finish El Casador de Sangre and that headbutt. One, two, three. But the referee is out. The referee has been knocked out. Come on, ref. Get another ref out here. We need more referees out here. As Haku counts his own pin, it doesn't work like that here. That's not, that's not how you win a match, Haku. Here. The fans are cheering for Haku, but we know he hasn't won the match because the official hasn't counted it. El Casador de Sangre is out. It'll take more than that, I think, to finish off El Casador de Sangre. Kick to the stomach. Mongolian chops. My God, are we going to see the tongue in death grip? De Sangre is completely crippled here. We've never seen him on the receiving end of such violence here. Big Tonga hammers. The mighty, mighty Tongan just clobbering the Puerto Rican. Oh, El Casador de Sangre might just have some energy here. Thank you for watching the Hannibal TV.
please like this video if you enjoyed it and click the subscribe button to not miss any of our latest shoot interviews, match videos, or news updates. Support us on Patreon.com for $1.99 a month to watch our full shoot interviews ad-free and help our channel grow. Follow us on Twitter at The Hannibal TV for instant updates.